Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week in the vlog we're going to be doing another bag in the year of bags, year of bags. So we have a fun bag this week from Beach Sand Designs and it is called the Riviera Handbag. So it's kind of like a tote bag with a zipper and these front ones are pockets that go down and there's also pockets in the in the um, interior of the bag and Yeah, it's just a really fun bag to make. I'm gonna call it the grandma bag because it just <laughs> reminds me, um, especially the fabrics she used on this one. And I have some quilted fabrics uh, from Joann's that I wanna use. And I, I think this would be the bag because this also reminds me of a Vera Bradley bag with the quilted fabric. So we're gonna try making it straight the first time. Um, let me go get that. I already made this bag when I first started bag making as part of our class. We made this bag. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is the first version of this bag that I made. And this front part is a pocket and it's kind of an, a whole pocket because I left it open there and on the other side as well. I made the handles longer and then it's got a slip pocket on one side with these just things you can rest in. And then on the other side, it's got a big giant zipper pocket. <clears throat> and it's also got a recess zipper to keep it all closed. So I kind of think of this as a tote bag, but I'm sure lots of people would consider it a purse. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna call it this week. Um, and the one thing I did is I put the interfacing on the bottom instead of the top of this part. So you'll see that this is all floppy and not as stiff as it should be. So we're gonna correct that and do that correctly this time. Um, I also for some reason left the bottom edge of the pocket raw. I don't know, I don't know what I did there. So I'll have to take a look at the pattern for that and fix that. But it's just a lot going on here. We've got four different fabrics going on. Um, I really love this detail of the pocket. I don't know if you can tell there, but there's like, there's a different fabric on the top of this pocket, which is kind of nice. It just kind of wraps around the pocket piece. Uh, so I thought that was a nice detail. And overall, just a really nice bag. You can see I even made it kind of grandma-y. <laughs> and then the fabrics we're going to use this week are kind of um, Norwegian type <laughs> fabrics, except for this one. We've got kind of a nice light denim here, and we are going to pair that with these two fabrics, which kind of look like, you know, wheat fields kind of thing. And then we're going to pair it with this one. This will probably be the inside. I'm not sure which one I'm going to have for the outside. We'll, we'll figure that out as we go. But I thought that would be a nice way to start. So it's four fabrics. And I think the only thing I didn't like about the original was that the handle fabric didn't seem to go with anything. So I don't know if I need four fabrics or just three fabrics. So we'll see. We'll figure that out as we go. I also wanted to show off my new iron. It's so cool. It looks very 50s, 60s. <laughs> So I've been wanting to buy a new iron because my iron is just like really old and it's just a regular iron. It doesn't have a lot of features to it. And I really wanted one that had this point and more holes um, for me. I also like that it is a top loading. Some of these irons have like a weird spot to try and fill the iron with water, which doesn't make sense. And we have our settings and our steam buttons. So I really like the Aliso iron that everybody uses for, for quilt making, except for the fact that it goes so it kind of like lifts up so that you don't have to put it on its side. But I just think that sound would be annoying after a while. <laughs> so I was looking for an iron and couldn't find one. And then this one popped up on my Amazon. So I'll put a link below to the iron. It's been really good so far. It's nice and heavy duty and seems like it's going to be better. My old iron, the steam button broke off. You can kind of get in there and move it over, <laughs> but it's, it's just kind of on its last legs. And the temperature, the temperature runs hot or cold 
it just depends on the day. So you never quite know what temperature you're getting. So I'm excited to have a new iron. And I'm happy to announce that we have a shop update. Yay, so I'll put a link here to my shop. So those drawstring bags that we made a couple of weeks ago, along with some cute progress keepers, are in there now for you to purchase. And if you didn't catch it last week, we decided to rip out our shawl and start over again. <laughs> so here is my new shawl. I basically just chunked up the whole pattern. So where we were doing this whole thing would have been single crochets in the old pattern, which was making a pretty small, a pretty small project, especially with this um, DK weight yarn. Plus I wasn't going to be able to fit all of my 25 minis in there. So I've really increased the bulk of this by changing the single crochets to half double crochets. And then when we get to the stripe part of the pattern, we'll be changing the half double crochets into double crochets, which will give us more of that, that whole pattern that I'm looking at. So oh, let me show you. Which will give me more of this texture. I think she used a sport weight yarn for this. So um, when I got to these holes, you couldn't even tell that they were holes. So you really weren't seeing the beauty of the pattern. So I'm just gonna chunk that up and <clears throat> third time's the charm. <laughs> okay, so I think we're ready to get going. Um, I hope that you've got a beverage, a warm beverage, a water, something to keep you occupied, your stitching in hand as you watch my video, or that you're ready to take some notes on the Riviera bag and see if you want to make it yourself. So let's get to cutting the fabric and putting this bag together. Let's go. Okay, so here we are with all our fabrics. I'm trying to plan out which fabrics are going to go where. If we take a look at the original one we made, you can see that there's the fabric that goes here. There's this fabric that loops around and into the pocket. There's this outer fabric that is basically the outside of the bag, but you only see this much of it. There's the fabric for the handles, which is also the recessed zipper, and then this interior fabric, which we also used for the pocket, and then this pocket, which is the exterior fabric again. So it's just a lot going on, you know, we're used to just dealing with two fabrics in a bag. Now here are my pitfalls. We're using decor bond. I was supposed to use fusible fleece, and I think I used fusible fleece in this part, but this here, the stabilizer we're using is decor bond, and you'll see how that didn't quite adhere. There's some bubbling going on, so I'm going to have to read the directions and just be better about getting that adhered before we make the bag. We've also got this bottom piece, which is weird because it's a piece of Peltex. Um, on the bottom here, but it's kind of not really working very well, so I will need to fix that. Now what we did here, what I messed up is, I think there's another key piece of decor bond, um, and I was supposed to have it at the top here, and when I sewed the bag together, I wound up putting it at the bottom, which didn't really work. So then when we did this stitching, it's just kind of, you know, not sitting great. And then the other thing I messed up was this interior pocket. I can't really flip the bag inside out now. Here we go. Um, and for some reason, I was like, oh, this is going to be sewn into the bottom, but it's not. So I now have a rough edge here, a raw edge on the pocket, which we're not going to do this time. So I'm just trying to look at the bag and think about the pitfalls that I had the first time I made the bag. I also added a zip pocket to this bag because I, I don't know, like like I said last week, um, the whole slip pocket, I mean slip pocket in a tote bag, sure, project bag, sure, uh, but I don't know, a purse I just feel like I want a real zip pocket to put chapstick and keys and other things in that's not going to like fall out of the pocket, I guess. So that's our plan. Now we've got our pattern, um, because, because this pink sand beach 
patterns come in this cute little sleeve and you know they're they're very shiny paper I can't really write on this and I do like to take notes so I just made a photocopy of the whole thing and put it here and then what I also did is I made a separate printout of the first page because this is where we have to determine what fabric is going where and you see I started writing it on this page but we want this to be our clean pattern so we don't want to have to deal with that um, I originally gave this pattern a B and I think it's pretty easy to put together this is the hardest part right here is figuring out what fabric goes where she's kind of given us a clue that this is fabric one this is fabric two which is this little accent this little accent piece and the lining fabric uh, this is fabric three is this top part which really doesn't get used anywhere else but I mean this whole thing is pocket so it goes all the way down and then fabric four is the handles. But you know, fabric four says straps, bottom, top zipper flap. It's, you know, so she's got lots of different pieces here. And I don't necessarily want the same fabric for each of these pieces. So that's the question. Like for the inside pocket, I want that to be this, this mint fabric, which is also going to be this top outside fabric. And then she has things like inside, there's the inside pocket, there's the outside lower pocket, back outside lower pocket. Um, so some of these terms don't quite translate for me into where it's located in the bag. So this has been the hardest part is just trying to figure out what to do here. And then we have a top zipper flap, which I do want in the mint because we're using, we're using this mint zipper. So I want those two next to each other. But then we have the bottom. You know, we have our recess zipper. This is the top of the recess zipper and the bottom. And there's four pieces to this. One, two, three, four. And she's only listing the top. The zip top zipper flap. I don't see like a bottom zipper flap listed anywhere here. She's only got us cutting out two pieces. So I'm assuming I need to cut out two pieces for the bottom. I don't see anything else that is three by 13 and a half here in this list of things we're cutting out. So I think that was a slight error there that I also need to do two, two in another color. And I think I'm gonna do that in the wheat. So it's just kind of complicated because we got like four fabrics going on here. And this has been the hardest thing is to figure this out. Um, I did add that zipper pocket, which I think is very helpful, but I didn't write down in the original, the original one I made, how big this pocket piece was. So I'm just gonna have to figure that out. And I, I kind of don't like the straps being a different color. I mean, this this pattern, this fabric isn't anywhere else on the outside of the bag. It doesn't make any sense. We've already got three, three colors, three fabrics going on, on the outside of the bag. So I just felt like that was kind of like, why do we need a fourth fabric, I guess is the question. Because this recessed zipper and this, it just looks odd. It looks like it doesn't go with the rest of the bag. So maybe this is better to be edited into three colors. Um, I am using the denim. So... The denim is a nice neutral, so I'm going to use that for the top of the bag here because you're not seeing a lot of that. I'm going to use it for the handles, the bottom, so we're just going to have a kind of neutral base. And then I decided, did I decide which one was the outside fabric? Um, pink. We're going to use the pink on the outside here. So that's the one you're going to see the most. And then the mint is going to be on the inside. So, oh, that was long. Okay. <laughs> so I think we've got this figured out and we can start um, ironing and cutting out the fabric for our bag. 
and we are going to write down some time here. So I am getting a very late start. It is 11.30 on Saturday. And yeah, this last week has been kind of stressful. We have um, classes starting again on Monday. There's been construction in the building, so it's just kind of like been stressful to try and set everything up and make sure all the classrooms are ready to go for Monday. And uh, so, yeah, last night I just needed to check out <laughs> and not work on this. So we're kind of getting a late start here on Saturday, but we'll do it. That's fine. Okay, so let's get this fabric cut out. Folks, the new iron is not working out. I don't know if you can tell, but the interfacing is all bubbly. Let me see if I can get you a shot of that. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe there you can see it better. See how it's bubbly? That is not what we want. That means the interfacing is not adhering properly. I don't know if I can get this to the right angle. You can't see it great, but... It's bubbly. Um, after working with the iron, just processing all the fabric for this project, I realized it's really heavy. It makes my wrist hurt. <laughs> so it's a little too heavy for me. And I don't use the steam that often that I feel like I need a crazy, wonderful, steamy iron. Um, and my current one, even though it runs hot and cold, I can count on it being hot enough to actually adhere the interfacing to the fabric. Um, I had a problem with my ironing board a while ago. I ordered a new ironing board. It had a little more cushion. And um, uh, it's been working great with the interfacing ever since. I rarely ever have this problem with the interfacing anymore. Um, and the iron just didn't feel like it was getting very hot. So, and that's on the cotton setting. There's a setting above that, but I don't know. <laughs> it's it's also just really, really heavy and hurts my wrist to use it all day yesterday. So I think I'm going to return that. I'm going to use my old iron for this week just to get this going and get this on properly. And then, um, yeah, I'll just look for a replacement for my sunbeam. I mean, I don't know. I guess I feel like I'm not professional if I don't have the fancy iron, but really I'm just ironing. <laughs> it's not it's not rocket science. It doesn't need to be expensive or fancy. Um, basically, my iron has just seen better days and could use a facelift. But I might just get a new model of the one I already have. So that's where we're at. Um, basically, everything I did yesterday as far as putting on the interfacing has to be re redone now and hopefully I can get all of these little pucker bubbles out. Um, and this is just the SF-101. I still have to cut out the other interfacing that we'll talk about in a minute. And then I didn't realize it, but I had changed the, um, the straps on the original bag. I guess I had made them an inch and a half versus an inch. And you can see that difference there. And on the bag, they look nice and chunky. They kind of go with the bag size. So uh, now I'm reconsidering my handles, except I ran out of SF-101. I had to order more. So I can't really redo these handles until I get the SF-101. I just don't have enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the handles and see if they're ridiculously out of proportion or not. So just having some um, struggles with the bag this week and just feeling kind of tired. Like I didn't really want to do anything yesterday. Didn't get started till 1130. And by the time we went out to lunch and ran errands and came back, 
it was three, so I just didn't get that much done yesterday. The other thing we're doing that is new in this pattern is we're using decor bond. So I've got several pieces here because when I first started making patterns, um, pink sands was the patterns I was making. <laughs> so we had a lot of these going on. So I figured I better invest in some decor bond and uh, I really haven't used it since making her patterns. <laughs> so I have a lot of this left. I'm going to read the directions here on how we're going to iron it on just to familiarize myself. That's in Spanish. Okay, I'll go back up here to English. Place shiny adhesive side against wrong side of fabric. Place iron on wool setting with steam. Cover with a damp press cloth. Press down firmly for 10 to 15 seconds, lifting and overlapping to ensure areas are fused. Okay, so we're gonna do steam and wool setting on this. And we've got a few pieces to, to cut out here. So in this pattern, she's having us use fusible fleece and decor bond, so it's a mix, and then we're gonna use a piece of Peltex for the bottom for stability. Uh, she didn't say anything about SF-101 on here, but I just, I SF-101 everything. So, um, Joanne's is having a sale right now. I just got lucky because I wasn't planning ahead. <laughs> Normally I plan ahead and either use my 40% off coupon or wait for all the interfacing to be on sale, which it was. It was, so that's good. Um, Everything in this in this pattern is measurements. So like we talked about, um, she's doing it length versus width, times width. So I just had to be careful cutting out all of the directional fabric, step one. Okay, so we're gonna go down this list and cut this out. And then she's got, she's got a bunch of hints here for us on how to do this. Then we're gonna do the decor bond first. And then if there's um, if there's fusible fleece, the fusible fleece is the second thing that we add on there. Okay. And we've got a cool pocket. I'll show you how she does this um, accent fabric on the pocket, which is really nice. So we will get to cutting this out just like everything else we've done. So we need a 10 and a half by 17. This is 22. So let me just go down the line here. This is a little offset, but as it's not fabric, it's okay if it's not 100%. Um, 100% even. And I do like to check things off. So a lot of times it's good to have this cut list and make a separate copy of this. Just print out an extra page of this um, to write for your specific pattern what we're doing and check off the pieces you cut so you don't actually accidentally cut too many. <laughs> trying to keep track of all these pieces and different colors. So these two go with these two. So that's good. Okay, so the reason we were only cutting two zipper flaps out is because we only need to. So we're gonna take another look at the pattern here. It's kind of like I can't really do things in this until I get to that place in the pattern. So as far as like cutting out all the interfacing and putting it on right away, I can't really do that. So, uh, it's just, it was way easier doing this in a class with somebody who's made it before there. And I still can't get the decor bond to adhere very well. So we're going to go press that one again. Oh, so frustrating. Alrighty. So we're going to take our zipper tape. And she said 14 inches, but I know we want a tail on this. Um, I could see what my other one was. It's so nice having a prototype here. So this zipper went 
way the hell out there. That's probably too long of a zipper, but it's a good start there. So that is about 20 inches long. Let's go with that. And then we're also gonna do one on the inside, but we won't worry about that right now. And I have to pick out a zipper pull for these. And we're gonna burn the ends here. Okay, I think we're gonna go with the regular zipper pull for the inside, and we're gonna go for a heart for the ins or for the outside. So we'll get this on here. Now, many of you know this trick, but it's the fork trick of getting your zipper pull on your zipper by the yard. You just kind of force it in there. Not that it's gonna wanna focus right now. So you force it in there with the curved side up, and then you separate your zipper tape, and you're gonna go upside down here and get the tape in here. And the only way I can do this is between my legs. So I'm just gonna kinda hold the fork. They have jigs you can buy now that um, stick onto the end of your table, but since this is my dining room table, I don't really wanna injure my table at all. So you're just gonna kinda get it on the end. And just like that, it really helps if you, if you adhere it to the end, or if you take a lighter and burn the end of it a little bit, that really helps. So I'm just trying to envision this because the way she's say, phrasing this is kind of difficult for me to envision. So we've got, we have fused the decor, decor bond to one half, like the picture says, and then we're gonna fold it up and we're gonna press the ends in. So I'll have to go back and press those ends in like that. And then we're gonna fold it up like this, which doesn't really get us all the way there. I think I did a little too much there, so I'm gonna have to force that up. Yeah, that's more than one and a half inches. Hmm. Well, that's not good. I made it more than one and a half inches. What piece did I cut? I think I just fused the wrong thing there. <clears throat> one and a half by 12 and a half. Okay. Well, since we cut the other flap already, because I cut two, <laughs> let's try that one instead. I just, I didn't think the um, the wheat was going to look good against this, but I don't know. I could cut more of this. I have enough scraps of the SF-101. I just think that looks better and it matches the inside. On this one, I picked this fabric that's like totally different from the rest of the fabric and I was like, why did I do that? So I think I will cut out two more pieces of that oh this is so confusing I remember having problems with this last time the only note that I wrote is to fold the ends a quarter of an inch and I think I mean these ends problem is is that this decor bond is just really gonna mess things up it's not it's not perfect and then I can't really fold anything now that this decor bond is in here it's too tight so I think what I did is I just did my own thing here on this zipper flap. See how the ends are folded in nicely? I mean, like, that's the whole point. Yeah. And then for some reason, like, the, the folded side is going to go in the, in the seam, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um... Which is why we do it the other way on the other recess zipper has two sides to it. Um, it has a it has a top and a bottom, and then when you sew them with the zipper, you sew them just regularly, and they're like that. I think I'm going to do the regular zipper recess zipper in here that I know and love instead of doing it this way, 
because now I've wasted two more pieces of fabric with the decor bond and I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it this way. I think the SF-101 is plenty with the two pieces of fabric, so we're just going to do it this way. Okay, so for this zipper, recess zipper, we're going to treat this like any other zipper we're putting in. We're going to have the... We're going to add the front side, which we're going to put like this, and the back side, which we're going to put like this, and we're going to sew it down and flip it over, actually like this. <laughs> One of the things we're going to do is we're going to fold all of these over by half an inch because we want a clean edge on that part. We are also going to sew... this end down and the way we're going to do that is by kind of pinching it and causing it to turn like this. Let me zoom in there so you can really see what I'm doing. So the idea here is that we're going to have, we don't want this raw edge in there. We want it to go at 45 degrees. This is probably the hardest part about doing this is getting this to curve. And we want that in the back. And we want them to look pretty even. So where we want them to curve is going to be pretty even there. So what we have to do now is take this to the sewing machine and just sew these ends down. And we want to do it on the very, very edge here. Get that. I want to do it on the very edge here. Because once we sew these down, you're going to have that little bit of space showing. And you don't want your stitches way down here or they will show. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is they want us to do the end of the zipper first. So we've got our little end here. And what she wants us to do is wrap the three inch sides together so it fits around the zipper tape. So we want to, actually we're gonna do it this way. So what we wanna do is we want to press these edges, <laughs> I can't hold it up. We wanna press these edges of the zipper tab in so that it's snugly around there, and then when we fold it, it'll be like that. But we also have to press these sides in. Okay, so I use the zipper, so I have exactly what I need here. So she wants us to wrap these two around the zipper. Gonna go right into the edge there, and then lift this up clean edge all the way around here. We're going to have some threads and stuff we're going to have to clean up, but that gets us pretty close. And then we're going to sew this down. Okay, so we are going to sew around all four edges here. And I'm just going to start on, I guess, this side. We want to start on the side so that we don't have a loose end in the corner. We don't have a join in the corner. Then we don't really have to go across this side, but it's just gonna make things easier for us later. So we go across that way. Kinda trying to make it look nice like a top stitch all the way around. We are gonna cut our long tails here. Did I get it? No, I didn't. Okay. Get these out of the way. And then I want to try and get these up at the top as close as possible without these little tails showing. You see how those little edges are showing? That's what we don't want. Flip the 
this whole thing and try and keep that as close as possible. Now this is inside the bag, so it's not like the end of the world if they don't wind up. It's just... I just want to make it look as finished as possible. And then we're going to join back up with this guy. So it's kind of difficult. This is the hard part here, is trying to get this to stay where you want it to stay at this 45 degree angle. But you can't have the clip there, so we're going to take the clip off. We're going to use this cool little thing called a stiletto to get us to stay in place here. But even that is difficult to keep there because we've got a we've got a stitch now. I'm just going to stitch back and forth a few times. I find it easier to do this from this side than the other side. See how those stitches are right on the edge there? That's what we want because our um, our flap is going to be hopefully down here covering that up. But I like to sew it from this direction because if you sew it from the other direction then the um, then the zipper teeth are under the foot which makes the foot not flat. So you're better off sewing it from this direction and the stiletto really helps us hold everything in place. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to overlap this so that we can sew these two pieces together in the end. So just like any other zipper, we're going to sew this down. And we're also going to sew this end in here because we want to capture that in the seam. And then we're going to do the lining piece on the opposite side of that. So we're going to, it's a zipper sandwich. So I'm just going to come back through and we want these two ends to meet perfectly so that when we flip this the other way around those two edges are exactly aligned. So we're just going to sandwich this. You could do this with the zipper open or closed, whichever one you want to do. When we get to the end here, we want these to line up exactly. So I'm just going to fudge this with my finger so that it ends up exactly and then I'm going to sew it down that way. Now the whole point of this is so that when we turn these the other way around, these ends line up. So that's the whole point of what we're doing here. So I'm going to go press this and then top stitch here just like we would any normal zipper construction. Okay, so now we are going to, and we're going to sew this side too just to have it all be nice and neat. So we can start over here. And we're going to put it at 3 inch stitch length. Just do our top stitching. Oh, you're not seeing any of this. Okay, just doing our top stitching like we normally would for a zipper. When 
we get to the end here, we're going to round the corner. We're going to make sure these are as lined up as possible. And then we're going to sew. Okay. So it's never going to be perfect. But we can get it close to perfect. I'm going to go a few back here. Now the nice thing is the beauty of this plan is this raw edge is going to be sewn into the lining. So we're really just sewing that down to keep it from going anywhere. And because it's easier for us to make a box here. So this end you'll see is sticking out a little further. We've already sewn that end, but I can taper this a little bit in my folding. And it's just about finagling. We're just going to finagle it here. And I wouldn't normally end in a corner like that, but that's the best we can do at this point. So we're going to cut that off, cut these off. Okay, so I think that's as clean as we're going to get it here. So when it's zipped, it looks like this. Now obviously mine's offset a little bit here, so these don't quite match up, but that's pretty, pretty darn good. So these raw edges are what's going to be sewn into the lining panel. And we will do that next. So that's been helpful. That's what I've been doing today. So this is kind of a weird part of the pattern here. We have to sew the outside pocket and the lining of that together. But you'll see they're not the same length. So the reason for that is that when we fold this over, you'll see that there's an accent, a little a little bit that pokes through on the top, and it's really cool. So we're going to sew these one side lengthwise. And here is the genius bit. So normally we would fold this over in half and press, but because of the decor bond, it doesn't want to fold here, and we don't want it to fold. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to press it this way so that we have a little accent at the top of the pocket which is genius just genius so we're gonna press it that way so that it lays like that and then we're gonna top stitch across the entire pocket very close to this edge like stitching in the ditch Okay, so here's what it looks like after it's sewn. We just got as close as we could to the edge there. And you just have this nice detail at the top of the pocket. How classy is that? <laughs> so we're going to do that with the other pocket. And then you'll see when we put it on the denim how nice that looks when we sew those two pieces together. That's going to look super classy. Really, really nice. So that's the concept here, and it's another reason why I picked the denim for the top of the bag is because it's nice and plain, really, really um, makes these front fabrics pop. And it is time to put this zipper, recess zipper, into the lining. So we have our bottom lining, our top piece, and then our zipper is going to go in between. We're going to sew that in. So what we are going to do is we're going to sandwich them together. 
All right, well, then it wants us to go this way. So we are going to center that. I'm gonna go ahead, I think, and tack this down just because it's gonna be easier than trying to sew all three pieces at once, just so nothing moves around. And then basically we're gonna sew this down here. And when we come back, we're gonna have a nice, nice edge there. And that's what it looks like when it's all sewn together. And I really like that we've made this the same color. I think this works a lot better than the other one I put in. That's interesting. I would have thought that we would be top stitching this just to hold everything in place, but I guess not. So the second side of this is a little bit more difficult. Um, and it might just be easier for us to open the zipper. We have this nice long tail, so we can just kind of get this piece out of the way as we work on this piece, which is nice. I just want to make sure I have both of these starting at the same place, which was two inches in from the other side there. And we're going to sew this down the same way. And there we have the other side, so let's zip it together. We have a really pretty recess zipper all ready to go and we are I think 90% done so we just have to sew here we have the outside of our bag all sewn together so we just have to sew the lining pieces together and then fit everything together and I will show you the finished result in a second and here we are at an, the end of another episode, folks. Uh, thanks for joining me this week. Let's take a look at our finished bag. So very cute. I think it's too much of a tote style for me. Um, you know, I originally gave this pattern a B, but it was like the third pattern I'd ever made. <laughs> and I don't like the way that this bottom comes together. We've got like four layers of interfacing on there, and by the time we get the Peltex on there, it's just not sticking. I can tell that it's not sticking at all, no matter how much I iron it down. I also feel like the recessed zipper is a little too high. I feel like this um, top piece is a little too small. Um, and then, yeah, I don't really get the point of the slip pocket. I'd rather have the zip pocket that we made on the other side. So here was our original one that I made in class a few years ago, and then here's our new one. The thing I really like about this was my color combinations. I like having the denim on top. It just adds like a nice resting point for your eye. That's something I don't do a lot. I tend to just mix all the colors and flavors together, and then there's, there's no resting point for your eye, it's just color pattern, color pattern. And I've seen other people that make, like the whole outside of the bag would be this denim, and then the inside would be this splashy color. And wow, I just admire their self-restraint because I don't have that kind of self-restraint. So that's not really my style, um, but I really do appreciate when you have, you have some plain things going on there. So I think I changed the grade. Yeah, I changed the grade to a C. This isn't one I'd want to make very often. Um, yeah, I don't like working with the decor bond. It's not really sticking. And I don't know if that's because my decor bond is five years old and it's just been sitting in my house for five years, or if uh, the product just doesn't really work very well. Um, the outside pocket has the decor bond and you can, I don't know, you can kind of tell it's just this different, a different feeling. And the bag took me nine and a half hours. Um, I think that one we've made in the beginning of the year, the Terrific Tote, would be a much better version of this. It's kind of like this, except it doesn't have this front pocket. I do like this front pocket detail. I would definitely do that on another bag. And I like the recessed zipper. So I just feel like I have other patterns that are like this, that are like a tote slash handbag that we could make that would be a lot easier than this. <laughs> the other thing about this, which was interesting, is the decor bond gives it this extra stiffness. 
Plus she had us do the, the fusible fleece in lining as well as the outside. So it just kind of bulks up the whole bag. So instead of using foam, we basically used the fusible fleece on the inside and the outside, and that's a good tip. I like that idea of doing that because the one layer of fusible fleece isn't quite enough. But if you add the fusible fleece to the lining, it just bulks up the whole bag and really makes it so it stands on its own. So I like that idea. I might put, I might implement that idea in another bag that has foam, just to give it those two layers without necessarily working with the foam, because we know I'm not a huge fan of the foam. So overall, there's some, there's some aspects of this that I like and some other things that just make it not really worth adding to the product line, especially when I have so many other bags that are very similar to this shape. So it's a no for me, but, um, but I think this one turned out really neat because we've got the pink version of the fabric and the mint version of the fabric, so that's really pretty. Um, I said I was going to make the Nora bag next week, but I've got a four-day weekend coming up, and I think the Nora bag is going to be a little more involved <laughs> than um, any of these other bags. So I have a different handbag pattern that we're going to try. It's a hobo bag, so we haven't done one of those. Well, I haven't filmed one of those at all. So I'm um, looking forward to doing that. It's got some cool zipper details in the front. And we'll be working on that next week. So I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. And thank you for joining me. I love it when you spend time with me. Uh, it really means a lot to me. And thank you to the new subscribers. Um, welcome. I hope you have fun here. And there's a year's worth of that catalog to look at, including the Vlogmas videos where you get to know me a little bit better than, um, than necessarily the studio videos. So I hope you check those out. And don't forget that the new project bags are in the shop. So if you wanna check that out, I would love that. Or you could buy me a coffee. Anything you want to do would be greatly appreciated and really helps support my channel. Okay, see you next week, folks. Love you, bye.